And Labor's Terry Butler and the LNP's Bill Glasson joined me in the studio earlier to make a final pitch to the electorate. Bill Glasson, Terry Butler, thanks for coming in. Now, Dr Glasson, can I start with you? What are you proposing to offer the voters of Griffith? Uh, Matt, I propose to, first of all, offer a strong voice, a voice with uh, knowledge and experience uh, of the people of Griffith, a voice that uh, has, spent, has most, spent most of his life in, in Griffith, raised his family in Griffith, run businesses in Griffith, uh, and importantly as well, I, I suppose, a voice with life experience. Terry Butler, your plan? Well, uh, in terms of what I can offer, I mean, I'm someone who is a young mum. I've got two kids. My husband and I have balanced full-time work with raising our family. And so we have the same pressures that a lot of people across Griffith have. If you look at the demographics of Griffith, it's a young electorate. It's an electorate where there are a lot of uh, parents who have to juggle that full-time work with raising kids. It's an electorate where people have a preponderance of, you know, very hard-working, 40-hour-plus-a-week uh, people, uh, and they have pressures on them. You both actually agree on the point of you're going to be strong advocates for the people of Griffith and you'll stand up to your parties mm -hmm. when you think they've done something wrong. Can you both tell me an, an example where you have stood up against your own party's beliefs, Dr Glasson? Uh, certainly. As the AMO president, uh, when, I was, when we took on the, the, the then LNP government over the medical indemnity issue, I went to Canberra and I threatened every LNP uh, sitting member, particularly in, who in marginal electorates. But th was this while you were part of the team, though? This is, no, this is... Pr pr so whilst you've been part of the LNP, what have you done to stand up to the LNP? Well, in terms of, of I suppose, in terms of policy issues, um, the, uh, I've, I've, had, I've had input in, in terms of, uh, you know, the, the, the health policy, the education policy, uh, to try and, I suppose, give, give, give better construct to those policies. Any particular issue, though, that you've disagreed with, that you've stood up? Uh, well, in, uh, well, I suppose I've tried to, in, in terms of disagreeing, I, it's a matter of sitting and discussing the policies with, with the various politicians concerned and trying to put in constructive input to, to make sure that, that uh, what we do develop in, that in, the, in the policy sense does reflect the views of, of, uh, of Griffith. OK, Terry Butler? Of course. I mean, a great example, marriage equality. A few years ago, our platform was vehemently opposed to marriage equality. Uh, I've worked with Rainbow Labor, which is the LGBTI group within the Australian Labor Party, to really campaign for marriage equality to be part of our platform. And those changes have been made. And I'm such a strong supporter of marriage equality. That's something I'm really proud of. But another example um, is changing how we open up the Labor Party to make our pre-selections more, democra more democratic. Uh, and that's something that isn't always necessarily popular, and I'm really proud of that history as well. Travis Windsor made the point, he's an independent candidate in this, this by-election, that you both represent the worst of your parties, a unionist lawyer and an elitist whose father was a politician. <laughs> how do you respond to the fact that you very much do seem like from central casting for, for Labor Party? I think it's sad and one-dimensional that those are the things that people focus on. I mean, look at me. I'm someone who's got two kids, who balances the same cost of living pressures as everybody else who has to manage a mortgage. I've got family from a small business background and I've seen firsthand how difficult it is to be a small business person in Australia today. I'm someone who's long been involved in... But your in husband, the AWU... Yeah, sure. You, you're, and you're a quite successful lawyer. I am a successful lawyer and I'm a successful lawyer because Gough Whitlam uh, managed to change the education uh, policy in this country so that people like me, whose family, not Silver Spoon, let's be honest, um, couldn't necessarily have afforded to send me to university were it not for Labor Party policy. So I'm someone who comes from a family where no one had ever been to university before I went to university. Can Please. I just throw to Dr Glasson to see how he would respond to the tag of being elitist? Well, can I, I think my history speaks for itself. I've spent my whole life uh, trying to help others. I've spent a huge, I spend about uh, six or eight weeks a year minimum out in the Aboriginal uh, communities and remote communities and also working overseas in East Timor. People who actually don't get services, I take the service to, to the people. A lot of that is done in, in a voluntary capacity. So, uh, and, and, and certainly when I grew up in the bush in, 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 out west, um, my, my parents didn't have much money. In fact, we were broke. Um, we had droughts, as they're have, having at the moment, and we struggled. And I, I, can, I can tell you that my mother gave up a huge amount of her life uh, and, and to make sure that we went away and got the appropriate education, as Terry's saying. Ms Butler, you've been campaigning on the cost of living, or you both have been campaigning on the cost of living. It's a big issue. The carbon tax would relieve some of that pressure, wouldn't it? 
Well, I've said I agree with scrapping the carbon tax if there's an ETS. That's the Labor Party position as well, because we believe in climate change. We believe in the science of climate change. What you know about the LNP is that they don't really believe in climate change. They've been dragged to the debate kicking and screaming. Tony Abbott's on the record about his scepticism about, about climate change. It is not enough to simply complain about the fact that climate change is there. You must do something. Now, I've read the policy paper that Greg Hunt released on the 20th of December very quietly, and I've got to tell you, the LNP policy is not a policy that that requires a single person within Australia to reduce emissions. There is no cap on emissions. It is just a policy of providing grants to polluters. Now, I don't think people want to see no action on climate change. I think direct action is a bit of a slogan, not really a policy. And people do expect government to take some leadership and try to mitigate carbon emissions. It's very similar with the renewable energy target. A lot of people are extremely concerned about the noises that have been made aimed at undermining the renewable energy target. Dr Glasson, how do you feel about the anti-bikey laws? Okay, can I just comment on that, that, that carbon tax issue first? The carbon tax is anti-jobs, it's anti-business, and it makes our businesses uncompetitive to overseas. It is a regressive tax. It's something like $6 billion that comes out of, out of taxpayers' pockets. And it has little or no difference on our carbon footprint. Now, if it made, was going to save our planet, I'd have no problem with it. And if everybody else in the world was participating, I'd have no problem. But it's making our businesses uncompetitive. It's driving jobs down. And, and, and it's, a, it's a really, it's a, it's a stick when we should be using a carrot. So and we've our, said our, we'll scrap our, it if there's an ETS. Well, but we, your we, policy we, has, we no, are, we, has we no stick and in, very little carrot. We are putting carrot. in an emission reduction fund a mission reduction fund that will... And there's only a green paper out, by the way, Terry. There's no, no official... But very few people have no, read, Bill, no, no, because no. you released it on the 20th of December, yeah, right before can, Christmas. People can respond to that, and, and there'll be, there will be a formal uh, response to that in terms, terms of a white paper. And those people listening, uh, the green paper is just a very preliminary sort of, I suppose, framework from which, uh, which everybody in the community can respond. And those who haven't heard about it, please respond, because we want to have... We want to make sure we do cre decrease our carbon footprint. There's no two ways about it. And, and I'm, I'm firm to be behind that. But I think we use the carrot rather than the stick and say to businesses, if you can demonstrate that you are reducing your carbon footprint, then you, you'll receive you know, a certain amount of funds. A true Liberal, though, would but opt for a market-based mechanism, wouldn't they? Well, possibly. I suppose... I, I, I mean, I'll, be, I'll be honest with you. I don't understand the technicalities of... of um, Over direct action, which is more of a... A left-wing ideology, wouldn't you think? But, but, but what I like about the direct action, well, there's two arms to it. There's the Emission Reduction Fund. But I do like the concept of, of the Green Army because that's actually, that's, that's actually hands-on. But would hands you prefer on. a market-based mechanism? Look, I, I, can I say I don't know enough about it to say that I prefer a market-based But isn't your system. business to know about it, being a representative well, in the well, federal parliament? No. What I want to do is, in terms of the green paper that's currently been put forward, and, and I want to see the responses to that, and, and I have looked at how the rest of the world do, uh, are doing it, and, and, and some of those are market-based, some, some aren't. So I want to see what the experts are saying. I'm, I don't claim to be an expert. What the experts are saying and what recommendations they've put forward and then, then look at, listen, what's the best way forward rather than having an aggressive carbon tax? Let's put something in place that, that is a carrot that attracts businesses to, to, to reduce our carbon, carbon footprint. I'm very pro-solar. Solar, you know, I want solar schools, solar towns, uh, put solar and on all the roofs. So the, the renewables, I have a, a huge passion for. But Bill, this is the back? problem with the carbon tax discussion that we've been having, because the only reason that we're even talking about the Green Paper in this campaign is because I have raised it in response to the material that you have put out attacking me on the carbon tax. Now, your material attacks me, but it makes no mention, Bill, of the Green Paper. But it makes no mention of the policy Terry, what do you issues. say about the businesses no, but that what are do you struggling? say about the, the Jobs that there is no lost, transparency that we're not in this government. Not this is the government that you want to join, that you say, I'll be a voice in the Australian government, and yet, Absolutely. and yet, there's no transparency, there's secrecy. They let out this green paper shortly before Christmas. They ask you to it's go a, out and campaign a, about public, the carbon it's a tax public document. and don't it even give you the document, document to read. It's a public document. It's just it's completely completely I'm sure there'll be more times to debate the, the carbon <laughs> tax and the direct action plan between now and, and the then. And the lack of transparency if I could just drag of the you, government. <laughs> drag you back to the, the, the state arena, the bikey laws. How do you feel about the anti-bikey laws? Listen, um, the, the reality of the, the bikey situation is, is that there was a lot of... Uh, uh, drug trade, a lot of, uh, um, I suppose, um, um, you know, the, the bikies were, 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 were running businesses that were legal, basically. We've had to come down hard on them, and Queensland is probably the, the, the government in Australia that has, to come, has, has, has come down hard on them. And, and I believe the pe that people in Queensland want us to come down hard, hard on them. Uh, and, and Ms Butler, uh, Labor 
six of 30 federal seats, seven of 89 state seats, lost a senator, doesn't hold the Lord Mayor to leave Brisbane. Doesn't seem like just a normal swing in the pendulum. Has Labor lost touch and doesn't know how to represent Queenslanders? Actually, this is part of the issue, Matt, that I've been talking to people about. We have so many LNP mouthpieces. We have so many people whose job it is to back no, I'm talking about Tony Labor, Abbott, though. They, they, they don't seem Tony to be able to represent Queensland to at the Campbell moment. Campbell Newman. That's the judgment of the and Queensland population. And to back in Campbell Newman. Uh, and that's why we need more Labor Party representatives, Matt, because we actually need people to cut through and say, well, hang on, what about this green paper that's released before Christmas? What about the secrecy on the Commission of Audit that's not now going to reveal its cuts until after the by-election? We actually need some more balance back in our parliaments, and that's why I'm saying I can be a genuine voice. No LNP person, it's not a criticism of Bill, no LNP person can be a genuine voice at the moment. They will have to fall into line with the Prime Minister, the Premier and the Lord Mayor. But Kerry, the, 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 the issue is that obviously if I'm elected, I'm part of the team in Canberra, and my voice can be effective and influential. The, the reality is that if you're elected, and with the greatest respect again, you're sitting in the opposition back benches and it's very difficult to get your message across. You can, you can make a lot of noise and, and, and sort of do the opposition bit, but the reality is you won't change policy. If you, if you elect myself, Bill Glaston, then I feel as I can go down there, I can voice the concerns of the electorate, and I can, I can make sure that the, the changes do occur in policy that uh, you know, are, are better for the people and, and give, give the lives of people in Griffith uh, uh, you know, uh, they're better off, basically. Well, I'm glad you guys are both spirited right up to the <laughs> final finishing line. Good luck tomorrow. Thank, Thank you so you. much for coming Thanks, in. Matt. Thanks, Matt. Thanks very much. much. And thanks very much, Terry. Thanks, Bill.